Hey everybody, it's Brother Anthony. Today is uh, Wednesday, November 13th. It's about 6.12 p.m. And I wanted to make this video before we go to House of Rest Bible Study, which is live. If you guys are going to watch this video, make sure you go ahead and tune in to uh, the channel, which is under David Rocha, for a live uh, Wednesday night Bible study on worship. So, today's reading is going to be out of Joshua chapter 9. As we know from the previous chapters, God uh, promised Joshua to lead the people into the promised land. But not only to lead them into the land, but also to take the land over. And we know that the land is inhabited by other tribes and other, uh, other cities and, and other people of 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 different uh, heritages and, and walks of life. So because of that, uh, God's hand was with Joshua as he defeated Jericho, as he uh, defeated Ai, and as they were moving closer into the land, uh, chapter 9 starts off like this. So the title of chapter 9 is The Treaty with the Gibeonites. And 9-1 reads like this. And it came to pass, when all the kings who were on this side of the Jordan, in the hills and in the lowland, and in all the coasts of the great sea toward Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hibite, and the Jebusite heard about it that they gathered together to fight with Joshua and Israel with one accord. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they worked craftily, and went and pretended to be ambassadors, and they took old sacks on their donkeys, old wineskins torn and mended, old and patched sandals on their feet, and old garments on themselves, and all the bread of their provisions was dry and moldy. And they went with Joshua, and they went to Joshua, to the camp of Gilgal, and said to him and to the men of Israel, We have come from a far country, now therefore make a covenant with us. Then the men of Israel said to the Hivites, Perhaps you dwell among us, so how can we make a covenant with you? But they said to Joshua, We are your servants. And Joshua said to them, Who are you, and where do you come from? Because, and where do you come from? So they said to him, verse 9, sorry, so they said to him, From a very far country your servants have come, because of the name of the Lord your God, for we have heard of his fame, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon king of Heshbon, and Og the king of Bashan, who was at Ashtaroth. Therefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provisions with you for the journey, and go to meet them, and say to them, We are your servants. Now therefore make a covenant with us. This bread of ours we took hot for our provisions from our houses on the day we departed to come to you. But now look, it is dry and moldy. And these wineskins which we filled were new, and see, they are torn. And these are garments, and our sandals have become old because of the very long journey. Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. So Joshua made peace with them, and made a covenant with them to let them live. And the rulers of the congregation swore to them. And it happened at the end of three days, after they had made a co covenant with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors who dwelt near them. Then the children of Israel journeyed and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Shepira, Beeroth, and Kerjath Jerim. But the children of Israel did not attack them, because the rulers of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel, and all the congregation complained against the rulers. Then all the rulers said to the congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. Now, therefore, we may not touch them. This we will do to them. We will let them live, lest wrath be upon us, because of the oath which we swore to them. And the rulers said to them, Let them live, but let them be woodcutters and water carriers for all the congregation, 
as the rulers had promised them. Then Joshua called for them, and he spoke to them, saying, Why have you deceived us, saying, We are from very far from you? We are very far from you, when you dwell near us. Now therefore you are cursed, and none of you shall be freed from being slaves, woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God. So they answered Joshua and said, Because your servants were clearly told that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you, therefore we were very much afraid for our lives because of you and have done this thing. And now here we are in your hands. Do with us as it seems good and right to do to us. So he did to them and delivered them out of the land, out of the hand of the children of Israel so that they did not kill them. And that day Joshua made them woodcutters and water carriers for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord in the place which he would choose, even to this day. Wow, so these Gibeonites, they were actually, they're, from what it seems here is they were a neighbor to uh, AI. They were, they were really close to AI, and they pretended... Um, to be ambassadors from a far country. They pretended to, to, to be this way so that the, the Israelites would have mercy on them. You know, the, right when they came and saw them, they said, Hey, so we heard about your God and, and, and the things that he has done for you. We want, we want you to make a treaty with us that uh, uh, we should be your servants. You know, so Joshua and the people made a covenant so they could be servants, you know, but Joshua eventually found out that they were a nearby city and found out their deception. But because of uh, their humbleness and coming in to Joshua's presence with, with a humble heart and, and wanting to be servants, God allowed them to live. You know, and, uh, and there's a lot, of, a lot of good things that happened with the Gibeonites. So here's a couple of the uh, examples of the great things that God can do with people who are sinners but come to him in humility and love. So the Gibeonites, after chapter 9, the Gibeonites became servants at the tabernacle just as Joshua commanded. Gibeon became a priestly city where the Ark of the Covenant often dwelled. You can see that in 1 Chronicles 16, 39-40. At least one of David's mighty men was a Gibeonite, 1 Chronicles 12.4. God spoke to Solomon at Gibeon, 1 Kings 3.4. The Gibeonites were some of the people who rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem with Nehemiah. You can see that in Nehemiah chapter 3, verse 7, and Nehemiah chapter 7, verses 25. So you see... This is a, a, a picture of, uh, of so many of us sinners who, who come to Christ with a humble heart. Who come to Christ knowing that He loves us so much that He can change us. That He loves us so much that He can use us for, for His kingdom, you know. And, uh, and like for myself, um, I, didn't, I used to not want anything to do with God. I used to think that it wasn't real. I used to think that uh, that people were Bible dumpers and and everything that that they were about was just something to uh, to to cover up like a cover up, you know. But after meeting Christ, after coming to Him and surrendering to Him and accepting what the the great things that I that I have uh, heard about, you know, just being humble and, and surrendering to Him. I found out that God uses me, that God uses people like me, that God uh, opens doors and and sh shines His light upon our lives, you know. And just like the Gibeonites, you know, they after uh, Joshua chapter nine, the Gibeonites were used in, in in mighty ways, you know. Just like I said about David, one of his mighty men was from from, from Gibeon, and they rebuilt the the walls of Jerusalem with the prophet Nehemiah, and uh, God just, uh, he continues to show his love in, uh, 
knowing that we were once sinners, you know, but now we have a new life in Christ. So the life lesson for Joshua chapter 9, the situation. God did not promise the Israelites the land without giving them the strength to conquer it. God helped Joshua lead the people into possession of their land. Observation. God does not give us commands or lead us to decisions and leave us to fight the obstacles in our own strength. He strengthens us and guides us in every detail. Amen. Inspiration comes from uh, Knowing God by J.I. Packer. It says, If I found I had driven into a bog, I should know I had missed the road. But this knowledge would not be of much comfort if I then had to stand helpless watching the car sink and vanish. The damage would be done. And that would be that. Is it the same when a Christian wakes up to the fact that he has missed God's guidance and taken the wrong way? Is the damage irrevocable? Must he now be put off course for life? Thank God, no. Our God is a God who not merely restores, but takes up our mistakes and follies into his plan for us and brings good out of them. This is part of the wonder of his gracious sovereignty. Guidance, like all God's acts of blessing under the covenant of grace, is a sovereign act. Not merely does God's not merely does God will to guide us in the same in the sense of showing us his way that we may tread it, he wills also to guide us in the more fundamental sense of ensuring that whatever happens, whatever mistakes we may make, we shall come safely home. Slipping and straying there will be, no doubt, but the everlasting arms are beneath us. We shall be caught, rescued, restored. This is God's promise. This is how good he is. Thus, it appears that the right context of discussing guidance is one of confidence in the God who will not let us ruin our souls. You know, uh, Isaiah 43 uh, I think it's two. I've quoted this verse before, but it says, uh, When you walk through the, through the rivers of water, the water shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. You know, as a Christian man, uh, building his faith in, in God's kingdom, I have to tell you that there are bumps in the road. There are obstacles that I need to overcome on a daily basis. There are things that we must go through that's going to shape our faith. You know, there are things that we have to overcome, and we may never get it perfect. We may never get it right, but these obstacles that we keep overcoming, we're going to learn how to stand up tall in Christ. You know, these things, that this God directing our steps, you know, maybe he, he sometimes he directs us through the mud. Sometimes he directs us through through the dirt roads and, and through the bogs and through the swamps, you know, so that we can learn how to dust ourselves off, so that we can learn how to stand up on our own two feet, you know, and, and fully trust in him. Because I know that uh, this walk is not easy, but it's, it's, it's a life that I choose. It's a life that I'm choosing to, uh, to, to walk, you know. Um, just like with Jesus, Jesus was persecuted. Jesus was was beaten and talked about and spit on and all this stuff, you know. And and we should expect the same. We should expect the same because if they made fun of our our Lord and Savior, just know that that we get the same. We get the same uh, the same treatment, you know. And uh, but if we keep con- Fighting to the end, keep walking and keep learning uh, from our mistakes, you know, we'll eventually uh, reap in the benefits, you know. So the application for Joshua chapter 9. Do you know someone who is suffering from unwise decisions? Is that person having trouble putting life back together? Contact that individual. What can you do to help? Be available for God to work through your service. For further exploration on consequences of sin, you could turn to Leviticus 26, 23 through 24, Deuteronomy 28, 15, the book of Job, chapter 5, verse 12, 
Proverbs 23.21, Ecclesiastes 2.26, Jeremiah 18.15-17, Romans chapter 2 verse 9, and Philippians chapter 3 verses 18 through 19. And I thought my study Bible was going to get here today, but Amazon is lagging on shipping it. I don't know if they shipped through UPS or through the regular mail, so I should have it by tomorrow. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hold off on chapter 10 until I get the study Bible. That way... We can really, really get into some deep teaching. You know, and I hope you guys are learning a lot from Joshua, as I am, because I've never taught this book. I've never read the whole book um, that I can remember, you know. Uh, I remember reading the Bible once, but I don't really remember reading it in this detail, this context. But God is blessing us, you know, continue to, to get in your word. You know, don't rely on me. Don't rely on another man to read you your Bible. But I'm glad that you guys tune in. But get in your word. Get in prayer. Ask God to pour his spirit upon you to give you better understanding. You know, because maybe there's there's some things in here that I'm leaving out. There's some things in here that God will speak to you personally. And God will change you personally. You know, so let's continue to, to pray for those who are lost. Continue to pray for leaders to stand up. Because like the Bible says, the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. You know, pray for more laborers. So you guys have a blessed day. I'll see you guys at House of Rest at 7. God bless.